Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Brie and I'm a mum of two beautiful children. I upload vlogs on day in the lives and haul videos and also DIY videos. I'd love for you to stick around and join our tribe. I upload videos every Wednesday evening at 7pm. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this week I thought I would do something a little bit different and plant up a DIY succulent garden for you. So if you're interested in this, please stick around. Succulents are back in fashion again and they've recently become very popular for indoors and outdoors. Great for small patios if you're living in an apartment or they're really great on a little windowsill that's got a good amount of sunlight to it. They were very popular in the 80s, especially in country areas that didn't have regular reliable rainfall as they don't require large amounts of watering. Just a little disclaimer, I'm not a professional gardener. I just really enjoy putting together little succulents and gardens. My mum and also my nana were both gardeners and they had a nursery. My mum's nursery was actually called Susan's Pot Plant Oasis. So I've grown up with a love of gardening and it's, it's in my blood. So yeah, I just thought I would put this together and hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get started. So when planting, I try and have everything on the table at my fingertips so that I'm not going back and forth looking for bits and pieces. I find it much better for time management. In fact, there will probably more than likely be some pieces left over for another project. If you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments below and I'll upload it in a few weeks time. Prior to starting our planting, it's always a good idea to clean up any old leaves off your plants or cuttings to ensure quick optimal growth. If there are any old leaves remaining, the plant tries to put everything into making the old growth good again, rather than concentrating on making new growth. You will notice on this piece that there is some old leaves as well as a new shoot forming. So by removing the old leaves, we are giving the new shoot a helping hand. Also, I'm going to add that if you do knock a leaf off, put it in a piece of soil as you can see here and it will shoot a new plant. So let's begin with a very important step and that is to put stones or charcoal pieces, which is also known as pot ash, in the base of your container. The purpose of this is for drainage, which is very important as succulents don't like wet feet. I always use hot ash if I don't have it on hand as it provides a good amount of potassium, calcium and phosphorus which are beneficial to many types of plants. It is also good to dig it through your vegetable garden if you are lucky enough to have a space for one at home. Next, it is a good idea to use a good quality potting mix. The one I'm using today has a slow release fertilizer in it which is also beneficial for your plants. Put a generous amount of soil in to begin with and ensure that you have plenty on hand as it is surprising how much you will actually need for these little mini gardens. I normally start with larger plants. I find it easier to get an idea on the positioning with the larger plants and then bring in the smaller pieces to balance it out. Sometimes I need to change my mind on what my original idea was depending on how they look or fit in the actual container. To remove the plants from their pots, it is kinder on the plant if you gently squeeze the plastic pot whilst rotating it. You will find the plant comes out a lot more easily this way. Then gently tap the roots or shake if necessary. In some situations where plants are extremely pot bound, it is difficult to extract them from the pot and then it is necessary to trim the older roots and retain the new whiter roots for a planting. As I'm going, I'm removing any smaller shoots from the plants so that I can use them elsewhere as I will have quite a few large plants in the container. And with spring beginning soon, I don't want them to outgrow the container too quickly. Besides, it will give me an excuse to make another succulent garden with the extra plants or swap them around with friends and family. You can see here on this piece that there are a number of baby plants that can be separated. So I'm going to pull those apart and I'm going to use one of the baby pieces in the center of our planter. So I'm just going to get all of the plants into the planter and repeat the planting steps as mentioned before. You can see here we've got a couple more babies and I'm going to separate those. This one's got a nice big long root so I'll put that aside and then use the larger plant. 
with this next one, you can see that there are some old roots there and some new white roots. mentioned before, gently shake the roots and the two will separate. With this little guy you'll see that I'm being really quite careful because the buds or the leaves can actually fall off quite easily. You can see a little one has fallen off so I'll put that aside and replant it. Here just remembering to press down very gently around the plant to avoid any further leaves falling off. Here on this little guy you can actually see a new shoot so I'm just going to plant him there and gently press around the soil. Once the planting is complete and I'm happy with the selection and placement of plants, I then apply the stones, or in this case, pebbles, to the surface of the soil. For this particular container, I'm using light, multicolored, small pebbles, as the plants are different textures and have different colored tonings, so therefore won't draw your eye away from the beauty of the plant. These pebbles were actually purchased for an aquarium, so you can improvise with whatever suits your project the best. Besides the fact that the stones or pebbles look good, they help against soil displacement when the plant is being watered. When the soil and planting is still fresh in the first few weeks after planting, the soil can wash away from the plants and can expose the roots in some instances. So the pebbles or stones are a very useful way in avoiding this situation. Once I've finished putting these stones in, I have a soft paintbrush on hand to gently remove any small pebbles from the top of the plants. This helps to reduce any further stress when planting. After you have cleaned the plants, it is then time for a good soaking. Water gently but thoroughly until you see the water escaping from the drainage hole at the base of the container. It is very important after planting to ensure a good soaking as it helps to eradicate the air holes in the soil which occur at the time of planting. It is important when planting a garden like this you choose plants which like similar conditions. All of these succulents require the same amount of water which is generally once a week during the warmer months and much less frequently in the cooler months like winter. Succulents don't like to be in constantly wet soil and sometimes can rot if left in wet soil for long periods of time. If they are indoors, they must be in a well-lit area with perhaps a little sunlight during the day. Succulents won't survive in a heavy frost, but they do like to be in full sun for a couple of hours in the day. The plants used in this garden are the aloe family, Sansevieria, pink sedum, hairy hawarthia, furry sempervivian, Red tip echeveria, another echeveria, a euphorbia, another echeveria, and I'm not convinced, but I was told this was a crassula. I also just wanted to show you this succulent garden, which I planted about two months ago. There's no definite rules for what you use as a container, provided you have good drainage when planting succulents. This had a hairline crack in it from the dishwasher, so I had three holes drilled into the base of the container as it's quite large and we need good drainage for the succulents. They're growing pretty nicely, don't you think? And this is the finished product. I'm really happy with it and can't wait to put it on my outdoor table. 
that's it from me guys I hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so every time I upload a video you'll be notified I hope this video gave you some inspiration and you are able to create something similar but that's it from me today guys I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I will see you guys in my next one bye